Hey everybody, Adam Savage. It's time for a one day build in my shop. Now, if you know me, you know how much I love Hellboy. I love Hellboy. Hellboy, I love Hellboy everything. I particularly love Hellboy's weapon. I love the Samaritan. This is a beautiful piece. This is actually one of the screen used Hellboy Samaritans. And it's mine. It's one of my favorite parts of my collection. Um, but if you are a fan, like I am, of the Hellboy comic books by Mike Mignola, the incredibly prolific Mike Mignola, um, you'll know that the Samaritan is only one of the weapons Hellboy uses to dispatch his enemies. In fact, there is a, a, a comic book frame of Hellboy holding a sword, like having grabbed a sword and using it in battle. And there's a particular frame that I really like of Hellboy holding a sword with a little D demon impaled at the end of the sword. Like, after the battle, this is the charred little bastard that he's killed and it's sitting there on the end of his sword. So today, I am going to add to my Hellboy weapon collection by making both the sword and the little demon that Hellboy has slung over his shoulder. Let's get started. All right, so the the sword that I'm hoping to replicate, the sword demon combo, is um, just cut to this frame. Okay, you see that? Like the big fat sword, the kind of ornate bottom, but the demon's hanging on the end. So I've got a demon base, which is this guy right here. This is, I bought this on Amazon. It's from some game or other. Um, and I like this body. I'm going to replace the head. I'm probably going to give it some claws and make it look a little nastier. And I may even take a blowtorch to it. But for size, this is the size. This is, I'm holding a sword here. Blade comes up here. This is the size of the demon. And he's like, hanging out at the end. Now, it's time for me to draw the sword and get the dimensions right. So... Let's go. If he's holding a sword. Yeah, this is actually not a bad length. It's not a bad length. So 48 inches, four feet. It's a nice long blade. Then there's the hilt, which is... I actually built a sword a very large sword. If you, anybody out there played Riven, um, I'm going to spoil a little bit of Riven here. At the end of Riven, there's this giant like triangular blade stuck in the ground that falls. And that blade was some CG, but the falling was actually done as a real element. And Jamie Heineman's M5 uh, got that job and I was the model maker and I built the knife from Riven that falls over. Yeah, and I'm gonna use some of those same techniques on this sword today. Okay, that looks great. I'm really happy with that. So I think that the hilt comes over like this. Yeah, sort of like that. Seven and a quarter, so. We'll do leather wrap like that. Yeah, like that. That's that's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, that's very Mignola, I think. I hope Mike would agree. Okay, I, probably, I might turn that on a lathe. If I've got the stock. All right, so there's my Hellboy sword. With the demon, would stick on the end. Yeah, that's... It's pretty good. I, could that be a little too big? Could it be a little too wide? No, it's Hellboy. He's he's gonna be he's gonna be visually large. Um, I'm gonna make the base of this sword out of plywood, out of a thin plywood, and I'm gonna come in from the edge, outside edge here, so I can. Mm -hmm. Just like that. Okay, three eighths on either side. If this is going to be my blade, I want it to have a um, uh, an edge 
which means I need to, which means I need to sharpen it. And I need to attach it to a piece of wood to do that and hit it on the table saw. Okay. Perfect! Awesome. So what I'm doing here is I'm angling the table saw blade and using it to cut an edge onto my plywood. Yes, you see that edge? Uh, I have, I'm about to do the same thing on this side. So I'm gonna shave it on one side with the angled table saw blade and then I'm gonna turn it around and shave the other side with the angled table saw blade. Uh, there's still going to be some more finishing to do on this because I'm going to use Bondo as well, but uh, that is the basic gist of this operation. Plywood always has a natural bend in it. You see that? That's, that's a problem. I want to make it straight. So by gluing a spine like this onto my sword blade, um, I should be able to straighten it out. And you can see, oh, it's a bit more straight. <laughs> it's still a little curved. So we're going to glue a spine on the other side and we're going to weight it down. Yeah, cool. We're going to weight it down and we're going to uh, hopefully get it nice and straight. Much better. Now, the question is, that doesn't look sword-like, does it? No, I know it doesn't. I'm going to fill this in here. That's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna fill it in on all four sides. I'm gonna do that with a magical material called Bondo, or body filler. It's a uh, polyester and fiberglass filler for fixing dents in your car. I'm gonna use it to fill in the body of this sword. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of swords, but one of the things that I feel looks coolest is what's called a hollow ground blade. It's specifically where um, if this is the center of the blade uh, and this is the edge, right, that the, that the grind is concave, that's concave, and that's called a hollow ground edge. Uh, and that is what I'm gonna try and replicate here with Bondo. I have made a tool here out of some plastic that gives me that hollow ground curvature. Yeah, that should be great. I'm gonna have to mix up a fair bit of Bondo and I'm gonna do it one side at a time and I'll be working on some other parts while this sets. Mostly done, and I'm very happy with that. Now, one of the things about uh, the body filler is that it takes a while to kick and it's soft for a little while. So you can actually do some shaping of it before it hardens to its full hardness. And that gives you a little bit of wiggle room for uh, some of the bigger, sort of chunks you want to get out of the way, or that I want to get out of the way. So right now I'm just doing some kind of basic shaping to get it off the edge to save myself some sanding later. I know the texture is a little bit rough, but that works for me. This is going to be a Hellboy blade. It's not gonna be brand new. It's not gonna be shiny. It's gonna be weathered and beaten. It's gonna have traveled through the ages to find its way to Hellboy's hand to defeat the demon. Dun, dun, dun.
dun, dun, dun. All right, let's see how we did here. Oh. Now that the Bondo is set, it is time to sand it smooth. Now normally I would have put the wood all the way into the handle to have what's called a full tang uh, uh, sword, but I was going with 48 inches and that's how long my wood was. So I drilled into the finished bondoed blade with a thin piece of carbon fiber tube and then I went over that with a fatter piece of carbon fiber tube and I've got this epoxy gun system. The tips actually mix two-part epoxy and that allows me to get a nice amount of epoxy in there. This handle should be good and stiff when I'm all done. All right, while that is setting, I'm going to start drawing up my uh, blade guard. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be about like that. Let me make that cut. This is coming into some form. I'm going to keep on working on it. And my handle, <laughs> this is coming along nicely. Okay, cool. So I want to mark this so I can carve it out. Let's see here. A, A. Good. This is coming along nicely. 
Let us dull this down a little bit more. All right, my blade is almost ready for making it look like a genuine sword blade. And I am going to use the technique I've used on Tested before. I'm not gonna paint it. That's right, I'm gonna use aluminum tape. One of my all time favorite crafting materials, aluminum tape is used for plumbing. You can buy it in almost any hardware store. And who, boy, doggy, does it actually lend some production value to your build. Now, I'm gonna go over this in a couple of passes. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, look at that. All right, so the form is done on the blade. I have covered it with aluminum tape. I'm very happy with how it looks. I have weathered it with some triple zero steel wool. I'm going to add some detail by hitting it with some matte black spray paint. Um, just watch what this does. So I hit it like this and then kind of You will see, I'm doing this to add some weathering to it. And then uh, once it dries, I will take some of it back off. Yeah. All right, uh, let's see. I'm just gonna let that sit there and I'm going to work a little bit more on this bad boy. I think this is gonna be black, but I gotta sand it just a bit more. All right, the paint on my aluminum tape has dried, so now I'm gonna pull it back off again. I know it looks kind of spotty and calico here. Watch what happens when I hit it with a steel wool. Oh, look at that! The weathering stays in the details, in the bumps, and makes it look like this thing is a thousand years old. Oh, that looks awesome! Yeah, yeah, look at that. It's totally pulling it off, that's awesome. Now it's time to make the finial, the, uh, the, what do you call it? The pommel, the thing at the end of the handle of the sword. I'm gonna use wrench shape to do this and it's gonna take a few passes to turn it, but yeah, here we go.
There we go. Yes. This gold treatment that I'm putting on is, of course, Rub and Buff, one of my favorite things. It is a metal powder infused wax that, when you let it set, adds a sheen and a shine to the things that you are detailing. It is just the best stuff. It makes it look, yeah, look at that. That looks old. That looks like it's been around the block. <laughs> All right, my sword, she is done. It is now time for me to put the demon that will be impaled on my sword. And I'm starting as a, uh, a basis using this um, evil monkey from Temple Run that I bought as a plush toy on Amazon. But I'm gonna make it look more demon-like and more upsetting. Okay. Ooh, 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 okay. Ah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Okay, so that we've got that. We've got that. I'm gonna put that there. Turn and. These are the. Uh, These are the bones of a rabbit that I found over in the East Bay. I think that could be useful. Maybe some of these ribs could be useful. Ha! Ah! I'm gonna use the tail from my old Hellboy costume. Yeah, it's gonna have a tail. Yeah, that's gonna be awesome. Slice that there. <laughs> that's gonna go like that. Yep. Okay. All right, I've got uh, some plumber's epoxy here I'm gonna use to give my monkey bigger fangs because, well, he's a little demon, and so he should have bigger fangs.
Come on. Oh, oh yeah. There you go. Oh, I've killed me a demon. Yeah. It's not quite done though. Now, just that's just the first part, right? Right, I think that is a proper demon impaled on the end of a Hellboy sword. Yeah, I'm very pleased. This has been a one day build with Adam Savage at tested.com. I don't know why I went to that accent. I mean, it's terrible really. It's like I've never even been to England, but you know, I have been once or twice, but it's not like I remember anything. All right. I'm going to sign out. Let's cut right.